um, safe space. Hi, everyone. Um, again, my name is Sam Manuel. <laughs> I come from the Dominican Republic, and I live in the Lower East Side. Hello, everyone. My name is Devontae Duncan. I'm from Brooklyn, born and raised, and my family is from Trinidad and St. Vincent. Hi, everyone. My name is Cielo. I live in Queens, and my family is from Mexico. Hi, I'm Ann Highsmith. Um, I live in the deep south of Brooklyn, aka Coney Island, and um, I, both my parents are from Haiti. Uh, so we're excited to talk to you about uh, Safe Space. And uh, Safe Space is a platform where users can interact with each other in a safe space, meaning they can share their stories, experiences, and be vulnerable with one another in a platform that like acknowledges that uh, this is like a type of community people seek. Devante, you're on mute, friend. Okay. <laughs> so now that you can all hear me, the technologies that you're seeing <laughs> on the screen is essentially what we've used to put together what, it, what we call a safe space. So we've used the modern React for the front end, as well as Node and Express for our back end server, as well as Postgres to store all of our data and all of our users' data. And speaking of data, we find that we wanted this app to be something that people could go on and have a sense of pseudonymity. And so we encrypt their passwords and use J we encrypt the passwords with bcrypt and use JWT in order to actually communicate back and forth so that we know when a user is logged in or not. And so that's essentially all the technologies we've been using. Uh, one interesting challenge uh, that I feel like that I faced uh, while building this application is the challenge of like bringing new technologies into uh, our stack, um, especially when the technologies are like affect the fundamental like building blocks, such as the data that we're storing in our database. Uh, and a, a really awesome solution that we came to together uh, was like going out, learning these new technologies, and then coming back as a group and teaching each other and making sure that everyone in the group feels like enabled to speak uh, about whatever technologies we implement it and also just like be productive for themselves. Uh, yeah, so that was, that was really interesting. And this is like an example of uh, Next.js. Uh, this is like one technology that we really wanted to implement because it allows us to like have a layer of abstraction above like the SQL that we write for our, and how we store our data uh, in a way that is like really maintainable uh, because all of us can set up our databases really quickly in the same way uh, with migrations and we can seed them, meaning we can get uh, started up and running with our users already in our platform uh, as we develop. And it just makes this whole process really modular, reversible, and expandable as we like define the data that we want in our application. So, oh, oh, there we go. So one of the other uh, technologies that we wanted to implement was essentially an anonymous real-time chat. And so the reason why we wanted to do this was to provide our users with essentially what is a safe space for them to pretty much talk to every user that's in the community and develop connections without having to sacrifice their anonymity like they would on regular social media networks. And well, the, the technology that we use specifically in order to pull this off was Saka.io, which was the framework you, we used to build in that real-time chat. And so essentially our server in this case worked sort of like a post office and the code snippet that you see before you here could be considered like a mailman. And so when a message was sent to our server, this mailman here would be responsible for just looking at the message and sending it off to where it's supposed to go without actually even needing to open it. And it, it, it's, it's sort of as if our server was actually juggling the messages, hence keep GIF in the bottom right corner. Hello. <laughs> so one of our biggest driving forces for creating this app but to actually be heard. And I thought the best way to bring this into, tuition, into fruition was to almost emulate a lot of social media posts, social media platforms and um, post components in order to not only be the purpose of allowing people to, to feel heard, but to also provide some type of familiar, familiarity 
for um, our new users. Uh, you could, oh, sorry. Uh, in order for me to make this goal come to uh, reality, I had to take a deep dive into React JS. So what you see before you is a use effect hook. Uh, this, so a user would see a like button and they would click like, and they would see like the number increased or like the box lit up. Say, okay, this, this happened, I like this. But in the back end, uh, this function is not only lighting that button, but it's also um, going into our database and adding that like. I chose this function because to me, it was just such a monumental moment because it was just the aha moment for you could click now. It was just the aha moment for me. Because <laughs> React wasn't always my strongest suit, but after taking that real deep dive into, into React, um, this was just like the first function that I got rolling. And once as I had this rolling, just creating all the other components just got easier and easier. Um, another challenge that we were that we encountered is how to get our users to safely register to our platform and protect their pseudonymity. The solution was to have the user sign up with the option to use their real name or an alias and having their passwords be hashed before saving it into our database. Pseudonymity allows our users to feel secure when sharing their stories and by encrypting our passwords, we prevent their private information to be leaked if our database is ever compromised. In this code, we are seeing the front end signing up to our platform. It is keeping track of username, email, and password. And then once the user form and submits it, we are sending a post request to the end. It is sent there where it will the password will be hashed using bcrypt, and the JWT will assign a cookie to the user that is used throughout the app. It will also be saved into our database, which is PostgreSQL. And then it, after signing up, you will be redirected to the login page where the user can, re, can log in and start using our platform. And although we can use like other different libraries to hash passwords and like save cookies, we decided to do this ourselves because it would allow us to dig deep into, um, and dig deep into doing the functionality and also getting us familiar to it. All right, looks like it's time to demo the project. So let me turn the screen. And just if the other panelists could confirm that they can see this. Amazing. Confirmed. Okay, so what you see, <laughs> what you see before you is essentially the home page for a safe space. And I'm gonna refresh it because I spent all night working on an animation and I want you all to see it. So <laughs> Ah, look at that, smooth, amazing. Okay, so essentially on this website, you should be able to create your own community, find mentorship, and just be able to tell your story in any of those communities. And so let's, actually, let me log out because I'm already logged in. But uh, let's create an account and see what the user's journey would be like for this. So the very first thing that you see here is a registration page. And so let's, uh, let's choose something. Uh, we'll stick with this generate something. I like this one. I think I'm going to be Carol Baskin. That works for me. All right. Let's make a password. And uh, just to show you, these forms are actually controlled. And so if I put in a password that doesn't necessarily meet the recommendations, it's going to tell me. So let's put in a password. Create our account. Then we're going to go ahead and log in. Cool. Okay, so now we can uh, we can go check out some of the spaces that we have available to us. And uh, let's let's take a look at this first one. Mindful morning. Mindfulness helps us cope with our feelings. Join us to share mindful practice stories, tips, and resources. So uh, let's let's take a look at this page and see what it's all about. Let's visit it. Got a couple of posts posts in here. 
Let's see. Okay. Today I'm grateful for enjoying some sweets. I think I relate with that. So I'm going to like that. I, I think I'm enjoying this space. So I think I'm actually going to join it. So now, yeah, now I've joined that space. I can see what they're all about. I can see who's in charge of this space, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, I can also view some of the comments that are on this. Apparently these guys all agree. That's great. And uh, yeah, so one of the other things is uh, if I make a post, then I can come over here, I can submit a post and say, I'm really enjoying my day. Yes, thank you all for coming. Post, and then I can actually go to my account over here and I'll be able to see that post. And if I want to, I can edit it or delete it as well. And so one of the other things that I want to show you is the chat feature. And uh, I'm pretty sure, Emmanuel, you're, you're ready over there, right? <laughs> yep. So one of the fun things is that in this chat feature, it's live. And so if I go online, I'll be able to see anyone else who goes online. So this seal person's online and I can go talk to, <laughs> I can go talk to everyone and just say hello. So that's me, Carol Baskin, saying hello to everyone and there's seal saying hello to everyone. And uh, I can also go back here and speak to seal privately, say something specific only to them. And for everyone on Zoom right now, this might seem very familiar. And so, Stu, if you wouldn't mind sending me a message back, yeah. And uh, if I wanna go back to talking to everyone else, I can just leave private and speak to them the same way. Yeah. And then one of the features that was really important to us was that we would wanna give users the ability to go offline which means that no one is, everyone is no longer available to actually, able to actually message you privately. And so everyone can communicate with themselves, but no one can communicate with you directly. And that's a choice that I feel like most modern social media networks don't exactly provide to you. You just kind of have an inbox and everyone has access to it, which may not always be what you want. And so one of the other things that I would like to show to all of you is the mobile first accessibility you, feature. You got 30 seconds to show it. 30 seconds, say no more, fam. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Everything is mobile. That's really what I wanted to show off. So you can, you can pretty much see how that works, which is great. Yeah, it's all mobile. Yeah, thanks, guys. How do I stop sharing? Incredible job. 